We're standing in a field of wheat today in Kentucky and one of the continued challenges that it seems like I have on a fairly frequent basis, especially in higher rainfall areas of the eastern US and the southeastern provinces of Canada, is fusarium head blight or scab as it's also known. And there's a lot of tools that growers have at their disposal to help control or at least reduce the pressure of scab. There's obviously foliar fungicides out there and they give pretty good suppression. The best ones like uh, Carambra and Prosaro in most examples give about 50 to 60 percent suppression if they're correctly applied and we'll define what what correctly applied is here in a few moments in addition to the timing. But I want to start out by just at least discussing some of the most important elements of crop management to help you generate the highest standards of fusarium suppression possible. And that obviously begins with a uniform field. We're standing in a field here that's pretty uniform, okay? However, across this state and other areas that I work in, there's some fields that really aren't very uniform. And you might think, well, why is that important? Well, it really is important because at fungicide application time, you need a uniform field. You want every plant, if possible, to head out and flower at as close to the same time as possible. So it absolutely begins with good quality seed. In this field we've got two varieties. Uh, if you do plant two varieties in the same field you need to be aware or certainly mindful of the fact that they may be different maturities. So if you've got this field that's a number of miles away from your operation and you want to head out there one time and spray it with a foliar fungicide, well ideally the maturities need to be the same. So it obviously starts with consistent and a good understanding of, of different varieties. It obviously encompasses good seed quality too. Obviously the seed needs to be treated with a fusarium fungicide, that's a given. Good quality seed with regards to germination percentage and vigor, and then it follows up with uniform seeding. Obviously you want to place as many of those seeds as possible into moisture to the same seeding depth, hopefully allowing all them seeds to emerge at the same time. So if all the seeds emerge as close to the same time as possible, you do a good job with fertility, spreading your fertilizer inputs as uniformly as possible, ideally you're going to have a field that heads out as uniformly as possible and this would be a good example. Then you can come in here at flowering and we'll discuss that here in a few minutes with a foliar fungicide and get the highest standards of fusarium suppression possible. Here we are in one of our variety trials and obviously the objective with these trials is to study and uh, research a lot of the different agronomics of each variety. Uh, standability, disease package or not as the case may be, uh, yield obviously, test weight, grain quality and all of the other factors. So within this trial or within a trial design, obviously what we also look for is varietal susceptibility or resistance, as the case may be, to fusarium, which is really important if you're no-tilling wheat directly into standing corn stalks, which is what we did in this example. And these are, these are obviously the corn stalks that are still standing uh, from last fall when it was drilled, uh, when it was seeded. So you've got to start out, if you're no-tilling wheat into corn stalks, you've absolutely got to start out with a variety that's got an above average tolerance to fusarium head scab because if you start out with a variety that's very sensitive to scab, you're st stacking the odds against you, uh, especially in a year when you get adequate rainfall and humidity and temperatures for scab because a lot of these spores from the soil and the infected residue with rainfall events that basically splash the spores up onto the uh, emerging heads, especially as they flower, you've got to have a variety with good tolerance to fusarium to start out with. So we're out in the variety trial looking at the different varieties and there's scabs starting to show up in some of them, this being a good example. So characteristic symptoms of scab obviously depends on the variety, but you either see this pale brown to pinkish discoloration of the heads above one spikelet which infects oftentimes all of the spikelets above the infection point. Sometimes you see two or three uh, infected spikelets and that's, that's all that 
that's all that occurs from an infection perspective. Sometimes it's only a single spikelet. So again, the amount of infection within the head depends heavily on the variety itself and the standard of resistance within the variety. We have had pretty ideal conditions for scab this year, so we expected some. This field was treated with a foliar fungicide at flowering stage, which is what we want to do but there are some fields around here that were not treated with a foliar fungicide and those are already starting to exhibit 30 to 50 percent of the heads showing fusarium head blight or scab. Obviously not good. The favorable environment that we've seen this year which is consistent with scab uh, epidemics we've seen in the past are obviously warm conditions. Daytime highs in the 70 to 85 Fahrenheit range. Warm conditions coupled to frequent rain fall events prior to head emergence and during the early flowering and early uh, grain fill stages, those are generally the conditions favorable for scab. We're standing here in a wheat field and we're getting towards the end of wheat harvest here in Kentucky and again like many years we've seen in the past, we've seen a big separation between growers that have got good yields, good test weight, low vomitoxin levels and growers that didn't really get the job done, if at all, with foliar fungicides and they're already stating they've got low yields, low test weights and high vomitoxin levels. So we're going to spend just a few minutes here discussing some of those elements in the hope that we can help farmers do a better job with foliar fungicides to help them increase their yields and profits. So in a nutshell, number one, I'm going to say this year, and again we had rainfall, we had warm conditions during flowering, the stars aligned to the fact we knew or we felt pretty conf confident that we were at a high risk from a point of view of fusarium head scab. There's also a head scab uh, model that we use on the internet. Here's a link for that. We use that as a tool. I'm not going to say it's 100%, but it's a good guide to use along with an, a good understanding of temperatures and rainfall at flowering during the wheat stages. Okay, so generally speaking, the guys that did a good job with foliar fungicides, Prosaro or Caramba, for example, applied at 10.51, which is flowering stage on the wheat, with plenty of water and aggressively angled forward and backwards nozzles that we found give much better coverage. Those are the guys that have got good wheat yields this year, good test weights, and low, if not no vomitoxin docks at all. Okay, on the other side of the spectrum, we've got guys that didn't do a very good job with time in the fungicides, didn't get very good coverage. Uh, maybe they didn't apply a fungicide at all. And there are some classic examples this year of fields that were probably a little bit more susceptible to scab, but they didn't put a foliar fungicide on them varieties. And there is some disastrous wheat yields, okay? There's some 40 or 50 bushel wheat, and I've got some growers that are cutting 100 to 120 bushel wheat just a few miles away. So we're talking about huge yield differences and quality differences and discount schedules at the elevator between guys that did a good job with fungicides and guys that didn't. Just yesterday I had a conversation with a grower and he was saying that some of his wheat yields were, were poor, low test weight, high vomitoxin and he was getting docks for that at the elevator. And he went on to say that all of his wheat was sprayed with a helicopter the same day, which initially sounds pretty good, but he then went on to tell me he had early varieties, a medium variety, and some later maturity varieties. And based upon experience with them varieties, I knew there was about a five, six, seven day spread in maturity of them varieties, and probably about the same when they headed out. So if you're putting a fungicide on all of them varieties, at best you've got a compromise. I'm feeling pretty sure that some were applied early, some were applied late, and I'm gonna guess the ones that was applied too early with a fungicide or too late are the ones that are struggling with yield, test weight, and vomitoxin, okay? So we do recommend applying the foliar fungicides at flowering, fix 10.51, when the heads are fully emerged on a uniform field ideally, plenty of water. Okay, ground rigs, forward backward nozzles, 15 to 20 gallons of water is much preferred. The more water, the better. Okay, the other thing I want to talk about a little bit is test weight and vomitoxin. Obviously, we've seen much better yields where we put on the foliar fungicides, Prosaro and Caramba, at flowering in an environment where we know we've got pretty high scab pressure. So we're getting high yields, but 
Guys are getting three, four, five bush, uh, pounds per bushel test weight improvements at this time from a point of view of the foliar fungicides. However, it rained yesterday, there's more rain in the forecast today. And when you start looking at some of these heads, you're already seeing that the grains that were dry yesterday are large and puffy because they're wet again as a result of the two inches of rain we got yesterday. And we've seen oftentimes in harvest when the wheat reaches physiological maturity and dries down, when we get a rain, doesn't have to be a very big rain, then it dries, then it rains again, then it dries. We've seen on average one or two pounds per bushel test weight drops approximately with every rain. So it's really important that you harvest the crop timely once it's physiologically mature. Lastly, I want to spend just a moment or two on vomitoxin or DON, as it's also called. I'm getting quite a few calls on that. Again, the same foliar fungicides, the Carambra and the Prosaro products, are just as good reducing DON levels as they are increasing yields. There's lots of work to suggest that the Prosaros and the Carambas of the world are pretty good at suppressing or reducing vomitoxin. And vomitoxin is basically a toxin within the grain that the elevators are docking farmers for. And it basically, uh, the vomitoxin basically causes a reduction in live weight gains in livestock, especially hogs. So as the vomitoxin levels increase in the grain sample, they're progressively increasing the dockage to the farmer. Okay, so by applying these foliar fungicides, not only are they getting higher yields, they're getting better grain quality from a point of view of test weight and lower dawn. So really in an environment when it's raining during flowering and the temperatures are favorable, you better be applying these fungicides correctly.